Hey, what is going on guys? DK. Back at you with another video here to bring the 8 game NBA main slate on Friday. Before I get into the video, because you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings. If you're unable to watch these YouTube videos, I also upload an Apple podcast. Link down below. It is called the DK DFS Show. If you're interested in signing up for premium content, often at patreon.com and NBA package as well as an esports package. Esports, we got Call of Duty and CSGO. CSGO slates every single day. Call of Duty slates usually four times a week. And I do want to thank Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this episode. Uh, if this is your first time watching these videos, you're not familiar with Underdog Fantasy. The idea is they have daily fantasy snake drafts as well as uh, best ball. So if you're a big best ball player, uh, yeah, definitely recommend under, uh, Underdog Fantasy. They have NBA, NFL, MLB. Uh, yeah, so if you guys want to sign up, you can use the code uh, after, after you make your first deposit, you use the code DKDFS. DKDFS, all one word, link down below. You will get a money back guarantee up to $100. They got some big tournaments going on. They got a million dollar to first NFL best ball tournament. So, yes, yeah, some, some big, big stuff there going on with Underdog. And finally, I just want to thank you guys for the continued support. Uh, this week, we've been averaging about 400 concurrent viewers in the live stream. That is crazy in the live stream. So thank you guys again. If you do enjoy this content, if you have a like button on the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload videos, you know when I go live. I will be doing a YouTube live stream tomorrow. Make sure to check it out, guys, and let's aim for 150 likes on this episode. But uh, yeah, with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. So before we talk about players and their prices for this eight-game slate, we can look back at uh, Thursday's NBA slate. All right, so eight games to go over, uh, but no, but, but seriously, uh, yeah, just the funny thing about today's slate was I had a core that, that went, went pretty well, right? Durant went off, Bazemore really well, Hernan Gomez was great, and, and Brunson was solid. Just literally every other player in my lineup got injured. <laughs> Can't make that up. So, uh, and then, yeah, the Kevin Porter Jr., the troll, like, are you serious? Are you serious, bro? After I have him as a core play the previous slate, shoots like two of 50. And then tonight goes for 50 points. A 50 point double double. <laughs> I mean, again, what? <laughs> so. Uh, as far as the Vegas odds for this slate, I'm, I'm trying to look in Bavada and keep throwing me to the future. So I don't think there's anything up right now. So let's just jump into it. Atlanta and Philadelphia. Well, on the Atlanta side, we have every per single person questionable. So a little bit hard to say right now. Uh, Capella, again, for my best ball team, it's over. It is over. You guys know LeBron and, Ky uh, and Kawhi are not coming back. Brogdon got injured. Uh, Kyrie Irving didn't play. Capella. But let's just have everyone not play. Let's just Capella not play too. Why not? Why not? Yeah, so it's completely over for me. But uh, yes, yeah, so for, for the Atlanta Hawks, again, we have Young, Capella, Bogdan, all questionable. If they are all out, and this is a really tough matchup, but they got absolutely destroyed the last time out. Um, if they, if the Hawks have any chance of keeping it close, it's going to be Lou Williams and John Collins. Lou Williams had a pretty solid day starting, played 31 minutes for 29 fancy points. Uh, again, John Collins at 7-3. don't love the price point, but like these two would be the reason they would stay in the game. You could even make the argument for Gallinari, who would have to get some shot attempts up. He shot one of nine that last game. Uh, Brandon Goodwin is somewhat popular. He went two of 11 in 32 minutes, went for 10 fancy points. I remember I, I made a tweet about Goodwin and how people got bailed out for keeping him in that one slate when he came off the bench. And I had like a bunch of people tell me, what are you talking about? He was still good to play off the bench. 32 minutes, 10 fancy points. You want to tell me that 20 minute, 26 fancy point game where he shot unreal uh, was not an outlier? Yeah, I don't think so. So um, yeah, again, a little bit hard to say at the moment, but like if they're going to keep this game close, if everyone is out, it would be Lou Collins. And then like Okongo would probably start the center, but like, do I really want to play him against Joel Embiid? Not really. Uh, I mean, Solomon Hill will play minutes. 
Uh, Chris Dunn, how many minutes did he play last game? Only 15. Yeah, so uh, I'm kind of hoping some of these guys play so we can just like avoid Atlanta. Um, if everyone that's questionable plays, I'll probably just avoid this team. I don't really like targeting players against the Philadelphia 76ers. Now on the 76ers side, it's Embiid for me, and that is it. Uh, and Embiid, if everyone that's questionable is out for Atlanta, that's a very good chance this game is not so competitive, so that is the risk. Uh, but he has a good amount of upside here in this matchup. I don't think I'm going to touch anyone else in Philadelphia. San Antonio and Boston, so no Derek White, but it doesn't do a ton for me. DeRozan, Murray in a tougher matchup, both secondary plays. Murray's had a back-to-back -back pretty good games, but it feels like a chasing a little bit going up against Boston. Uh, Devin Vassell started uh, the last game, played 25 minutes. If he starts again, playable, but uh, again, not a super high usage guy. Patty Mills actually lost minutes. Lonnie Walker did play a little more. He played 29 minutes. I just, I, I don't trust Popovich. I don't really want to go there. And yeah, Yaka Pertle at 5'7", he'll play 25 to 30 minutes and is a fair play in the mid-range. On the Boston side, so Kemba Walker, again, also on my best ball team, uh, is not, not expected to play. Uh, Tatum and Brown at the top at 9'8 eight and 8'8". Eight, eight, eight. Um, be careful here. Be careful. Both had, you know, unreal games the last game against Charlotte. Uh, Jalen Brown went for 57. Tatum went for, I think, 50 plus two. Yeah, 59. The matchup's solid, but the price point's up there. Like, almost 10K for Tatum and almost 9K for Jalen Brown. I think they're both decent options. Neither priority plays, though. Marcus Smart also back, so I'm probably not going to get to Fournier or Peyton Pritchard. Robert Williams also back at 5.3K. He played 17 minutes off the bench. Um, if he starts and there's no limit for him, then I could, you know, see taking a shot at him since he's a good point for a guy. But uh, I'm not touching anything else in Boston. Washington and Cleveland, again, Westbrook is just a just every night, right? It's just, he's going to play 40 plus minutes a night, 42, 41 last couple of games. Uh, sure. He did have the one dud against his Cleveland Cavaliers team, but he's just such a safe play. Uh, optimal play in the slate for sure. Yeah. So really like Westbrook at the top there. Beal more of the contrarian GPP play. And the rest of the Wizards, I'm just not doing it. I'm just not doing it on this slate. Uh, moving on to Cleveland, depends on Sexton. If Sexton's in, then, you know, both Sexton and Garland feel a little bit overpriced. Probably Allen would be my favorite play, who did play 37 minutes the last game. He has potential to play like 35 plus. So it'd probably be Allen. Now, if Sexton is out, then we can then we can consider some of the value, like a Chetty Osmond at 5-4, who's played 30 plus minutes the last three games. Um, Dean Wade was somewhat popular last night. He played uh, 30 plus minutes two games ago, and then 13. Uh, Dotson should get about 20 minutes on the bench, but I don't know if we have to go there. coral has been solid recently, but mm, wouldn't feel great about it. Portland, Brooklyn. So this game looks really good, which means it'll blow out. <laughs> uh, on the Portland side, the top two guards in Lillard and CJ McCollum. Great matchup here. Both firmly in play. Both more tournament plays, I think, uh, for their prices. But again, like the upside in both these guys in this matchup against Brooklyn Nets. Yusuf Nurkic. I played in back-to-back -back slates. He has crushed in back-to-back -back slates. But also, the game is blown out in back-to-back -back slates. So 33 in 20 minutes and 30 in 21 minutes. So he's averaging about 1.5 fantasy points per minute. What happens when he gets 30, right? So if he continues in this rate... 45, right? That's that's what he's looking to based on. And previous two games, 59 and 53. So Nurkic has been phenomenal. I love targeting bigs against the Brooklyn Nets team. I still like him at 7-1. I think, you know, box score watchers might get off him, but you got to take into consideration. He did not, he has played like two and a half quarters in both these games. So um, I do like me some Yusuf Nurkic there at 7-1 with Paul and Covington. I will say one of those guys will probably have a big game. They've been taking turns, uh, just more GPP plays. On the Brooklyn Nets, so uh, Kyrie Irving, we'll see. He it was right groin soreness. I'm guessing that's more just rest. So like maybe he comes back in this one. Kevin Durant, I'm intrigued by it. It's a back to back. He played 36 minutes. I think there's a chance he rests. So keep an eye on this. Like if Kyrie's out again and Kevin Durant plays, I like Kevin Durant a lot. He's probably like one of the probably the best buttons slate again. If Kevin Durant is out and Kyrie plays, and I really like Kyrie. So uh, yeah, that'll be something to monitor for sure. Value for uh, the Brooklyn Nets. If there's no Kyrie Irving, it was a combination of Tyler Johnson and Mike James. Tyler Johnson played 26 minutes, one for 22 fantasy points. Uh, Mike, James, Mike James shot 0 of 7 in 25 minutes. Can't make that up. Those two, though, would be viable value plays. Uh, Landry Shamit has been starting and playing about 30 minutes. I think he's a pretty decent play, actually, at 3.9K. Jeff Green at 4.8, you know, should get 30 to 35 minutes. Also a viable value play. Uh, Blake Griffin did not play a ton here. A little bit uh, worrisome there. He only played 14 minutes. And can we, we got to talk about this. All right. 
I'm sure you, I'm sure you know where I'm going here. Elise Johnson goes for a 20-20 game tonight. 20 points, 21 boards, 3 assists, and 2 blocks. I guess should have been all over him in the revenge game. If it was a revenge game narrative there against the Pacers. But it's just like, what? He's not even been in the rotation. And then just plays 32 minutes tonight. Um, I don't know what to make uh, of him. I don't know what to make of his minutes. He'll probably be popular. I think he's for sure in play at mid-price. Uh, will he play 32 minutes again? Probably not. I think, you know, based on last game, based on that he played really well, I would think he'd be in the rotation. Maybe 20-ish minutes, which is playable, but it's just like, I don't know what to do with them right now. Um, so that was just like, I, I, I'm speechless about that. But... All right, Orlando and Memphis. So, uh, Orlando, it's a good matchup here. Cole Anthony's a vibe of playing the mid-range. Should play 30, 35 minutes. But does he have, like, a ton of upside? He's kind of just hovering in the 25 to 35 fantasy point range, which doesn't really stand out. Carter Jr., Mo Bamba, splitting center minutes, not much there. Um, Okiki is out also, so that's, that is some more minutes to go around. Uh, Ennis uh, was on a minutes limit, so I'm probably not going to get to him assuming he's on a minutes limit again. We do have to talk about uh, Gary Harris and Dwayne Bacon, unfortunately. Uh, feels like chasing, but Gary Harris, uh, took over 41 fancy points. Uh, just, what is the stat line from a three and D scoring dependent player for a 19.6 board, seven assist, two block game? I mean, what has been going on this last week? I have, I, I literally cannot explain it. Uh, but yeah, Gary Harris for sure in play Dwayne Bacon, a guy I very much dislike, uh, but I would assume he starts and probably plays over 30 minutes. So you got Bacon, you got Harris for value that are playable, uh, and then you got, you know, Cole Anthony is a decent play in the mid-range. On the Memphis side, so Triple J is, is out. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas at 7.7K. We know he's a good point per minute guy. I think he gets about 30 minutes if this game does stay competitive. Should build a feast against that front court. So don't mind JV in tournaments. Don't mind John tournaments. Again, at their respective prices, they're just more GPP plays. There's really not much else here. Like, Memphis runs a really deep rotation, so... I'm probably not getting to anyone else. Milwaukee and Chicago. So Giannis in the first like 30 seconds got injured that game, did not return. Do not expect him to play, which means, you know, you guys know what to do. It's Middleton. It's Drew Holiday. It's Bobby Portis. Three of the best plays of the slate. Absolutely love all three. Um, Bobby Portis uh, had a big game tonight. I don't, let's see, how many minutes did he play? Uh, he played 24 minutes. Again, at a double-double. Bryn, we got, we got to talk about this too. Let's see if it's up here. 30 point. This is the, this is your Bryn Forbes stat line. 30 points, zero rebounds, zero assists. Just 30 points. <laughs> oh God. I have, I just have no idea what happened tonight. Just, just have no idea what's going on. Um, but uh, yeah, so back to back to the, the the guys that actually have interest in Middleton, Drew, Bobby Portis. I think look like three of the best plays of the slate. You can make the argument for DiVincenzo. You can make the argument for Brooke Lopez. You can make the argument for Pat Conton. Let's see how many minutes did Pat Conton play. Only seventeen actually off the bench. It's not great. PJ Tucker played thirty. He could play fifty minutes. I wouldn't play PJ Tucker. So um, really, again, it, it's Drew. It's Middleton. It's Bobby Portis. Uh, if you play Brent Forbes, it kind of feels like chasing. To be honest. But he is the flat min price. Yeah, feels like chasing them. Chicago, so Zach Levine's still out. Vucevic at the top at, at 10.1K. Um, you know, should play 35 plus minutes. has been phenomenal. Uh, basically getting double-double every single slate. I'm not afraid of Brooke Lopez in the defensive end. So I do like Vuce at the top. I think Kobe White's a pretty good play in the mid-range. This game is definitely stackable. 38, 36, 35 minutes the last three games. Those two look pretty solid here for the Bulls. Um, the rest of the Bulls, I think there's a couple of viable plays in like Thad Young, Daniel Tice. The minutes have been a little bit up and down, but Thad Young, last three games, 22, 26, 29. So they're trending up. He's a guy that can stuff a stat sheet. I think he's playable at that price. And then Daniel Tice, also again, the minutes fluctuate from somewhere around like 20 to 30 minutes. Um, he had a big 51 fancy point game and followed up with 10. So again, a little bit hard to trust. And I don't, I don't think I can get to anything else. Like Garrett Temple's at 3-6. 
I mean, the, the positive is he has played 33, 31, and 35 minutes, but literally in two of those three games, eight and 14 fancy points. So sure, you can play him, but again, su- such a low usage guy. Utah and Phoenix, two teams that play slow, two teams that are good in the defensive end. Uh, we have Mitchell, Conley, Royce, o- uh, 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 Royce O'Neal questionable. Clarkson, Joe Ingles, um, yeah. I mean, if, if there's no Royce O'Neal, too, that, that's more myths to go around. Uh, Clarkson at 7-3, I think, is firmly in play. Again, usage will be him, will be Joe Ingles. Joe, Joe Ingles will handle the ball a ton. Even though it's a bad matchup, I think those two guys are, are still pretty decent plays in the mid-range. Boyan's playable, but again, more reliant on the scoring. Um, if he hits the shots, he can get there. And then, yeah, if Royce O'Neal's out, I think Niang at 3-4 becomes one of the better value plays at the slate. He started, played 26 minutes, went for 31 fantasy points. Would really like Niang. Um... I think Niang's viable either way, but if Royce O'Neal's out, like he's gonna have to play big minutes. And then, honestly, I don't even know who's gonna who else is gonna be in this rotation. So like, if there's no Royce O'Neal again, it's gonna be Gobert, Clarkson, Ingles, Bojan Bogdanovic, Niang, and then like Favors will play the backup five. Like, will Ilya Silva play a little bit maybe? And then it's just like, I like what what is it? Trent Forrest, Matt Thomas, like Oni. I, I don't know. I don't know what else they're going to do, but I uh, really want to focus on the main guys. Again, Yang for value if there's no Royce. Uh, either way, I think he's in play. And then Ingles, Clarkson, I think look really good at their respective prices. On the Phoenix side, so once again, Jay Crowder, Dario Sarge, questionable. Doesn't do a ton for me. I mean, Cam Johnson, Torrey Craig have kind of been spoiling that run, but I, I just don't think I can stomach that. Um, Chris Paul at 7 8 has played over 30 minutes the last five games. Even though it's a bad matchup, I think he's a fair play. Booker, eight and more secondary options. There's not a ton of love here for Phoenix in a tough matchup. Finally, Sacramento and LA. So this game has some upside, but there's also some bullet risk here. The Sacramento team is awful. No Fox, no Barnes. Uh, so we'll start with Tyrese Halbert at 7.4K. If they're going to stay in this game, we're probably going to have to see a pretty big game from Halbert. Um, he should play 35 plus minutes. So do have some interest in him in the mid range. Don't mind Buddy Heald too. A little bit more score independent. But again, these two are going to have to carry the load offensively. And then also Marvin Bagley is probable, but um, we'll see if there's going to be minutes limit. It was a hand, so like maybe there's no limit. Keep an eye on this one. Keep an eye on this one and, and, and what you know what the role is for Bagley if there's a limit. If he starts and there's no limit, then I actually do like Marvin Bagley at 4-7. Um, so yeah, that'll be something to monitor. Um, kind of, I think Metu is probably out of play with Marvin Bagley in. Again, Rashawn Holmes, 6'8". If there's no limit, he's a viable GPP play. And then Mo Harkless will play minutes, but he's very, very low usage. Um, the other fringe guys in like Davis, DeLon Wright, don't know if they have to go there. Especially with Bagley back, that's just one more guy uh, in this rotation. And finally, the LA Lakers. So, we got to start with Anthony Davis. If you played Anthony Davis last night like me, you were probably tilting early uh, until the fourth quarter when he played the five, and he just absolutely smashed. He had like 20 fancy points going in the fourth, and then uh, the fourth quarter, I think, was the only time he played without Drummond, and again, he absolutely went off. So, don't know what to make of that. You know, Drummond did, did not play the fourth. Um, AD, it's hard because he was, re- he's with Drummond in the lineup. He really takes a big hit usage wise because Drummond just eats all the boards. So, it's a tricky one. I, I like the upside in AD if he's going to play more at the five, but again, Drummond is still going to play some, right? He played 20 minutes and crushed in that time. Man, super frustrating roster for DFS. Schroeder is probably the safest play, but I don't love the price either at 7-2. It's just because the minutes plus the floor, the uh, assist. And, and there's not much else here for the Lakers, really. So it's a tough one. Like Davis, I have some interest in, but it depends how many minutes he plays at the five. I think Schroeder's the safest. Drummond, playable for tournaments. And that is where I'm at for this eight-game slate, guys. And that is going to do it for the video. So if you have been enjoying the content so far, I would really appreciate if you give a like button on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And hit the notification bell so you know when I upload videos, you know when I live. As always, again, we'll be doing the YouTube live stream tomorrow. Make sure to check it out. Thanks again. Have a great night, guys. And I will see you all tomorrow in the live stream.